today and what we're going to talk about is I'm going to Deuteronomy chapter 6 first off to start off but I'm going to start and I believe it's going to probably end up being a series from what I'm sensing that the Lord is going to have me to do is um, because I've kind of you know I've encountered certain things throughout the day like through I mean when I say like throughout the day I end up having to come home and go to sleep because I've had to, you know, deal with several people and several different things today. So what I've had to encounter today, I'm thinking that I'm going to go to sleep and I'm about, I'm done with this part right here. I'm going to move on into something else. But I guess the Lord wants me to, uh, to deal with, you know, to bring out some understanding and some clarity on some things. So I'm going to start a series and I say series because I believe that's what is going to more than likely end up being is a series. And in this series here, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the war within, the war within, and we're going to take those words and we are going to, um, we're going to take those words and we're going to, uh, my volume is completely up, so I don't know why that will be because it's completely up. Um, anybody? Yeah, so I'm not sure because my volume is completely up. Um but it is the the war within, and so we're going to take those words and we're going to define those words and put some context to to those words. And we're going to use Deuteronomy chapter six, and we'll probably bounce through more places in the Bible. But we're going to start with Deuteronomy chapter six, and we're going to talk about the war, the war within. And so we're going to start out. Let's get some context on these words. You know, we we know that we have to understand words. We we are the word people, baby. They should just call us the word, the word, because we have to have us some defining, you know, some definition or context about words in order for us to know how to properly articulate it or to know exactly what it is that we that we need to do. And so the war, the war. Let's talk about this word war. I looked it up and I seen a definition that blew me um, with the word war. It wasn't the very first one that comes up when you pull up the word war. But I kept just reading down in until I could see. And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it right there. And this is what the definition says. It says a sustained effort to deal with or end. To deal with or end, I love that the fact that it said end, bring closure to. A sustained effort to deal with, I thought I cut that thing down. To deal with, if I don't, it's going to keep going, hold on. If I don't, it'll just keep going. But it says a sustained effort to deal with or end a particular unpleasant or undesirable situation. So it's saying war is about bringing a thing to a close. I mean, baby, y'all, <laughs> boy, I like to jump out my chair when I say war is about bringing a thing to a close. You go into the greatest war. Now it makes so much sense why the darkest hour is just before day. It's all getting more clear. I didn't ever doubt it anyway, but it's really getting more clear with God saying this here. And so this is the thing. It's like the war actually comes when it's about to bring a thing to a close. God help me. When it's about to bring a thing to an end. War. And so the war, Jesus, the war within, the war within, the war within. Do y'all hear me already? <laughs> Do y'all hear me already? Woo. Yes, ma'am. The war within, the war within. Wow, man. I am serious, man. Hold on, man. I got to make sure that I got this thing on this podcast. And, and it is. So, it's letting us know that, you know, what it is saying is, is that whenever, God, man, you're talking about... <laughs> 
you tell me I feel the power of God. Y'all just be, you know, just hey, pray for me and and maybe because I'm just getting started and I ain't five minutes in and I'm already feeling, you know, the power of God because I know because like I said, I was gonna go another route, but God was like, no. I'm like, man, I did, man. I'm tired. I, you know what I'm saying? I've been, I know I already had to take a nap and everything. It's like, no, no. The war within. And so the definition again of war is a sustained effort to deal with or end a particular unpleasant or undesirable situation. So whenever war starts taking place, that means that thing is coming to a close. I, don't, I, I can't get past that. Yeah, man. <sighs> That mean that thing is coming to a close. Think about, you know, how so much trouble begins to happen when people are ending something. When there is the ending of a relationship, all war starts breaking out because that thing is coming to a close. That's what war indicates. And, you know, as much as I have interacted and, you know, and even encountered war in my life and heard of war and all, I have not ever just let it sit with me like that to think that war actually comes when it is bringing something to a close. When something is about to have a means of end, war breaks out. And so, again, the definition, we're talking about the war within. We're going to break down these words and grab scriptures to see what it is that God has to say to us. The war within, a sustained effort to deal with. I like that. It says to deal with. To deal with. Not running from it. Whenever there is war waves, when they say, bring it, bring it. Hey, look, you might as well bring it because I'm not running. I'm not hiding. I'm not backing down. You might as well go ahead and bring it. That is war. It says a sustained effort, 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 meaning that a willingness to go forward. An agreement to go forward. This is effort. Putting effort, that means I am giving up myself in this. An effort. It says a sustained effort to deal with or end. So I'm about to deal with this situation. I'm about to bring this thing to a close. Point blank. Point blank. But something is about to happen whenever war starts being waged. Whenever there is war, I feel the Holy Spirit. When war starts being waged, something is about to happen. I am either about to deal with this thing or about to bring this thing to a closure. It's about to come to an end. So it's a sustained effort to deal with or end a particular, then it says unpleasant. It had these two words in parentheses, bringing emphasis to them. It says a particular unpleasant. So if something is not pleasant, it does not taste good. It doesn't have a good taste about it. It's a bitter taste about it. It's something that I just don't like. It's something that I, I don't even want to think about because I don't like it. I don't like the thought of it. I don't I don't like the association with it or anything. It says it's unpleasant. Then it says undesirable. Man, man, man. Well, listen, listen. Y'all better hear this. Undesirable literally means that that's not me. That's not that's not even a desire of my heart. That is not something that I am sitting there saying I want to be or something that I'm saying I want to do. It is undesirable, period. It's undesirable. But there has to be war that is raised. God, I feel like getting out of here. Lord, help me, please. I, let me do this tonight. Uh, okay, so look, it, it, it's, look, war starts coming when you're sick of it. You will wage war when you're tired of it. If you're not tired of it, you're not going to wage war against it. If you're not tired of it. When you catch us, and we, and I say us because I say us as a people, as a human race. When you catch us and we're not tired of something, and you start coming against something that we're not tired of, we'll start attacking you. Instead of attacking the issue, we will attack the people. 
you are the person that we think is trying to interfere, trying to keep us. They don't, don't nobody want to see us together, but they don't matter because I got you. So we'll start attacking the people, thinking that it's the people that are just trying to keep us from being together when really the attack is against what the relationship has the capability of doing. The relationship is not good. The relationship is not going to warrant anything good. So now there is something that is said about the relationship, but because I'm not at a place of end with it now, it's not displeasurable to me. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, help me. It's not displeasurable to me. It's not undesirable to me. So when something is said about it, I get offended with it because it's something I want. So war is not waged until you're tired of it. And once you become tired of it, you will begin to wage war against it. I ain't even got to the second word. You will begin to wage war against it because it's undesirable and it is also unpleasant. It's something that you don't want. So it warrants a war to start with it. I was so captivated. So captivated by the revelation of God giving me with that. So that is the word war. We're talking about the war within. So now the word within, I did not look up the word within. I'm going to give y'all what I heard the Holy Spirit say, because a lot of times the Holy Spirit will give me the definition of a word so that I, I don't ever disassociate it. I can remember it when God gives it to me quicker than I can reading it in Webster. And so what God said to me was carrying inside. Within means to carry inside, to carry inside. Notice what God said. He used the word carry. Oh, man, means that I am taking this with me everywhere. I got to get out of here, y'all. It, 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 it means I am taking this with me everywhere that I go. Everywhere, everywhere that I go. It doesn't matter if I go to Enterprise, it's with me. It doesn't matter if I go to Dothan, it's with me. It doesn't matter if I go cruising, it's with me. Because it is the war within. It is the war within. So when something is within, that means I am carrying it on the inside of me. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let's go there. Deuteronomy chapter six. I'm in the King James Version. I would advise y'all to go there as well. King James Version. So you see exactly what is being said and nothing is being extracted from it, nor nothing being added to it. Deuteronomy chapter six. And we're talking about the war within the war within. This is a place that everybody finds themselves at some period where there is a war within. There is war within our members. It is a, a place, you know, and it's, it's a place place that has to know how to be properly dealt with because if not it can run you crazy believe it or not it can run you crazy because you have yes and a no going a yes and a no. You have a hot and a cold. You have a up and a down going. You have an in and a out, and it can run you crazy. The one that when there is a war going on within, it is it's a lukewarm. Is what it is. It's a lukewarm. A war within identifies or it reveals a lukewarmness. Now understand what God says about lukewarmness. He says that I will spew you out of my nostrils because he wants you to either be hot or to be cold. So he does not want, he does not want us to be lukewarm. And so what happens is when there is a war that is going on on the inside and now this war is beginning to be revealed or it's being, it's, it's done now becomes, it's become seen. It's not hidden anymore. It's now because it is a place of lukewarmness that I have been living and God is now ready for me to make a decision about which way I'm going to go. Am I going to go with him or am I going to go with the circumstance or go with the ways of the world. So I cannot continue to be lukewarm. So what that means, I'm about to get in some trouble tonight. I can already feel it. What, what that means is, is that I can't be in there. And then, uh, and then there's a dark side. There is a very, very dark side. What that is, is that is lukewarm. That's what that is. 
It's lukewarm. It's not a decisiveness that is there. And so what God begins to do is, is God begins to pull us out and begin to bring us to a point of making a decision. And so then a war within begins to take place where the light and the darkness begin to start fighting with each other. They begin to start wrestling with each other. You will start seeing people where they'll be in situations where they're trying to make a decision. Well, I really want to serve God. I really want to live for God, but I got this right here going on. I got that right there going on. I don't know what I'm going to do because see, it's a war that's going on inside of the members. There is a fight that's happening on the inside of, of the members. And so God is exposing it because he's saying, listen, you've done this long enough. You know, you haven't made the choice. You, it's done been too long. Whenever you see God start dealing with us at that point, it ain't something that just happened. There is that negative word that we shouldn't use, but it needed to be used then. It ain't again. It ain't something that just started happening. This is somebody that's done been hanging around God long enough for them to be in a position of, of seeming as though they are with God. But then God is saying, no, ho, 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 ho. no, baby, no, baby. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't been with me long enough now for it to be a decision made about who you going to serve it for you, for a decision to be made about what you're going to do. Are you going to serve the God that your forefathers served on the other side of the flood? Or are you going to go with me? Because as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. So you start seeing a war start coming out. And you can tell when there is a war going on because there are all types of emotions that begin to come with the war. It just, you know, it's, it's, it seems as though they are schizophrenic, like they bipolar, man. You can't really tell what's going on, but them folk fighting like hell. That's what's happening with them. They are struggling. They are warring real bad because they're trying to trying to make a God is pushing at the decision. Make the decision. Make the decision. Make the decision. You're not going to keep doing it. You're not going to keep but hey, you know what? I, I You know hey, I've been settled in this right here. I've been living with this dark side even though I've been on this side going ha, ha, she, te, de, bo, sho, ba, pa, ra, ba, pa, si, an, de, de, bo, se, be, you, bo, sha. I've been getting phone calls and people been looking up to me and people just been admiring me but then there is this dark side that God knows that is there and he's waging war because he's saying look you're going to have to make a decision what you're going to do what are you going to do what are you going to do? So Deuteronomy chapter six, let me show y'all in scripture. Oh God, I bless your name. Let me show y'all in scripture. Let me start at verse one to bring this thing down into context. It says, now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, which the Lord, your God commanded to teach you. God don't play, do, do. <laughs> he makes me think about that song that I, uh, a song that came out when I was a little girl, Die Hard. It's a, it was a rapping dude was the name of the guy. He said, he, he said, He's the baddest rapper in history and there'll be no more after me. That's my, that's my thoughts about God. He's the baddest rapper in history and there'll be no more after him. None after him. He, so he says, look, here are my commandments, my statutes and my judgments. If I had time, I'd break every one of those down for y'all. He says, wish the Lord your God. Listen to what he said. The Lord your God now. The Lord your God, the one that you have associated yourself with but still don't want to do nothing with that dark side. Uh-huh. Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. That one that you have affiliated yourself with and the one that you have, have uh, got in front of people and, and said that he was your God or you portrayed yourself to be a certain way with him. So this is the Lord, your God, that commands to teach you. Notice what he says. He says to teach you, to teach you. So when it comes to, please, Delphine, don't get yourself in no trouble. I'm going to do it because every time I get started, I get in trouble. Trouble, but I ain't. I'm like bone crusher. I ain't ever scared. And y'all already know that. Watch this here. He says to teach you. So when God starts dealing with commandments, when God starts dealing with statutes, when God starts dealing with judgments, he's going to teach those things. He's, he doesn't hoop and holler those. He doesn't hoop and holler those. I'm sorry. I just messed up the whole trajectory of church just then. And some of the preachers probably going to listen to me and get offended. But they know I ain't scared of them either. Um, I might not know everything in the Bible. But I'm at birth enough to know the God of the Bible. 
and he protects me. So when it comes to the commandments, the statutes, you see it right there, and the judgments, God will teach. God wants you to sit your butt down and get taught. Running and hooping and hollering ain't going to cut it when you need to be taught something. That's a lot of the reason why many people are not advancing in the kingdom is because they ain't sat down to be taught. When it comes to somebody teaching, they have an issue with that because they consider that to be slow. Now you slow. You slow. You are slow. Because you outrunning a word that is needed to pump your brakes and to put something in you that will last throughout your life. And you're trading it for a temporary fix. You're trading it for a fleeting moment that is passing by. So all you will be able to tell people is by the time Tuesday come and you done been in there hollering and bucking and about to throw your head off and everything. And by the time Tuesday comes, somebody asks you, what was the word you don't even know? But see, if you had a got taught something, you'd be able to tell them what you were taught because what you taught, you retain. So whenever God got ready, I'm going to get in trouble, but I don't care. Whenever God gets ready to deal with commandments, which is what you shouldn't do and what you should do. And he starts dealing with statues, which is to build character. That's what statue mean is to build character. And when he starts to deal with judgments, which are the things that he will pronounce upon our lives. Uh, when he starts, y'all, oh God, when he starts, gets ready to deal with that, he says, sit down. I need to teach you. Sit down, pull up a chair and let me teach you. So for, <laughs> uh, Oh, man. Sit down and pull up a chair and allow me to teach you, please. Allow me to teach you. But the teachers of today are being looked at as though they have no value because they ain't got folks running from one end over to the other end. And some of them folks is running from one end to the other end and running in the bed with men and men and women and women and running in the bed with folks husband and all that types ain't ran off. None of that stuff when they need to be set down and be taught so they can learn the commandments. What are the commandments? Don't do that. That's the commandment. Don't do that. That shall not covet. Which means do not. Do not invoke yourself on another person's property. Sit down to learn that. But you can't catch it running. Because it's just a feeling. It's just an emotion. It's just a feeling. No. And so I'm still in verse one. Let me try to go on further. It says, which the Lord God, your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land, whether ye go to possess it. Now, listen to what he just said. The man just said, I'm about to take you somewhere to possess something that I have for you. But the only way that you're going to get it is when you sit down to be taught. If I change the text, somebody stop me and tell me you got all rights. You're going to get it, but you're going to have to sit down to be taught to get it. You're going to have to sit down and learn my commandments. You're going to have to sit down and learn my statutes, which is get your character under, under, get your character together, get it under control and your judgments, which are the things that are pronounced over your life. The way that you get it is by sitting yourself down to be taught. All right, that's verse one. Verse two says this, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse two. It says that thou mighty, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. That's some of the problem. There's not enough fear of God. When there's a war within, there's not enough fear of God. Because when there is a real fear of God, you automatically pump the brakes to anything that's trying to take you outside of God. You are automatically yourself. Hold up. Wait, wait. Ah, stop. I'm not finna do that. I'm not doing that. Why? If y'all think that I live the best that I can, not perfect. I'm gonna make sure you know that. But if y'all think that I live the best that I can, Let's talk about the singleness. Having done been without anybody touching me 
outside of marriage in over 15 years, if you think that that has been done because that's something I wanted to do, you are sadly mistaken because I am human just like you. Um, I hadn't asked God to take my nature. I ain't going to ever ask God to take my nature if you want to know the truth. The reason it hasn't happened is because I have a healthy fear of the Lord. I do not want to have to deal with punishment. I do not want to have to deal with unhealthy circumstances and situations. So I don't do it. So he says that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. So whenever there is things that we do, and that's all of us, including me, whenever there are things that we do that override the righteousness of God, it means we do not have a healthy fear of God. It's just the truth. We do not have a healthy fear of God. We haven't been... We haven't made it to a place of just reverencing him for real. Reverencing meaning a respect. We don't have that. I've done it myself. I've, I've overridden the Holy Spirit on many times. You know, I, I've, I've done it. I might not do it as much as I used to, but I've done it. I've overrode the Holy Spirit because there wasn't a healthy fear of God that was there. And it says to keep all his statutes. There it is. See? Character, that's character. God, please help me. If I don't err, oh man, please. If I've errored somewhere in my character, I'm sorry. And let's get it fixed. Uh, to keep all his statutes, statutes, character, and his commandments, which is his way of doing things, his right and wrong, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. So look what he's saying right now. If I do these things, if I win the war that is going on within, my days will be prolonged. You have to understand that the enemy is desiring to kill you. That is his whole purpose. He's desiring to kill you. Bottom line. And he wants to kill us in sin. Because if we are killed in sin and haven't repented, we miss that eternal home with the streets of gold, as it says. We miss the state of peace, the state of oneness. We miss that. So if he can get us to not have a healthy fear of God, to not reverence God as we should. And he knows it increases his chances of shortening our days. You can't pray. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. You can't pray and ask God to do certain things, but then live outside of the confines of God's word. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. I stay in trouble, though. Uh, you can't. You cannot. I'll give y'all an example. I can't take authority over one of the things that I pray against is premature death. Premature meaning that dying before time, before the assigned time. I can't pray against and bind up premature mm -hmm. death, but find myself in areas where death is, where death exists. The wages of sin is death. So I can't pray against premature death, but still be in sin. I, I, I'm going to get in trouble this evening, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's all right. I can handle it. I done told y'all don't come for me because I come back. I ain't got that saved yet. I come back now, so don't get back up. Give me, give me, give me, give me 50 feet. Back up. Back up. I'm just doing what the man wants me to do. Okay. I cannot say, Father, I, I speak prosperity 
and financial blessings over me. But then I'm not a giver. I'm stingy. I, I won't help nobody. I can't do that. Those things put me outside of the parameter of God. They take me and put me outside of the secret place that Psalms 91 talks about. He that dwelleth in the secret place, he dwelleth there. Means that dwelleth has an E-T-H at the end. Anytime you see an E-T-H at the end of a word in the Bible, it means continuously. So he that continues to dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide. Abide means to literally be one or to come into. So he shall abide under the shadow of the almighty, which means that God's, he doesn't even have to be there physically himself. His shadow is enough to cover. It is enough to protect. And so it keeps me within the confines. It keeps me in the confines. It keeps me safe. But if I am stepping outside of that area, I just forfeited the prayers that I done prayed. God help me. I just forfeited everything that I done said. I just forfeited. I just gave it away. Verse 3, Deuteronomy 6, verse 3. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. Observe to do it. When you observe something, it means you give study to it. You give details. You look for intricate parts in it. So observe to do it. That it may be well. Y'all better see what all the Lord trying to tell us that's going to happen for us. It says it may be well with thee. I don't know about y'all, but I need things to be well with me. I I done had all the wars and the rumors of wars that I want to deal with. So I need it to be well with me. I don't want to fight no more, Hoppo. I I, I rest my case. Go on and get the other woman if you want to. Because I I don't want to fight no more. I'm done with fighting. I'm done. So he says that it shall be well with thee and that thou may increase. Look at that. Look at that. I want y'all to see all the blessings that it's talking about is going to happen for us when we win the war within. That we're going, it's going to increase us mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee. So can I tell you, even with who you are and even with where you are and even with what you're dealing with, even with what you're going through, God has made some promises over you. I wish y'all would hear me tonight. God has made some promises over you. God has made some promises over you. He says, in the land that floweth, there's an ETH with milk and honey. So look what he's saying. I want to put you in a place where you don't have to be worried anymore. I want to put you in a place where something is consistently coming to you, where there are streams that are coming to you all the time. One of my favorite things is that God will make rivers in the desert. So it doesn't matter. Even in a dry and barren land, God knows how to come up with something because he will make rivers in the desert. So he's saying there is a land that flows with milk and honey that I have for you. I have this for you. But the thing of it is, is because there is this dark side of you and then you got this other tongue talking side of you. A war has to be waged now because somebody's got to make a decision. Somebody's got to decide, do you want him or me? Do you want him or me? So there is a decision that has to be made. Verse 4 says, hear, O Israel. Now here it is. The Lord our God is one Lord. How do I win the war within It is by becoming single. It is by becoming single. He says, hear, O Israel, once he tells them that thing, he says, the bottom line of it is, is you've got to know that the Lord our God is one Lord. See, the problem is 
is you haven't accepted him as one. You got many lords. Your money may be your lord. You may even be your lord. Pride will make you be your own lord. Your image will make you be your own lord. Your possessions can be your lord. But he's saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one lord. One lord. I'm pushing for a decision. Verse 5 says this, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. There is a healthy fear right there. That's where a healthy fear comes in. Because you love God in all contexts. So there is nobody that can supersede him. There is nobody that you're willing to put before him because he's occupied the space. You've made him Lord of all five areas of your life. He's not just Lord of the Spirit. Some people just want to make him Lord of the Spirit. So when he's Lord of the Spirit, that means that whenever they get a feeling, you know, or either just on Sundays, he's Lord of the feeling. You know, he, he's Lord then because it is, it's my feeling. But God wants to be Lord over all five areas of our life. And so it says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Thy soul is our mind, emotions, and our will. That's what the soul consists of, the mind, the emotions, and the will. So he wants us to love him with all our heart. The heart meaning, the heart is the place where things are housed such as what I am willing to do for others and also what I am willing to do for myself. That is what's housed inside of the heart. That is why he says that he will remove the stony heart or the the callous heart, the unforgiving heart. And he will give it a heart of flesh. Why does it need a heart of flesh? Because when it takes a heart of flesh, it cares about what it does to other people. It cares about what it does to other people. That is separate from what it's talking about in the soul when it's talking about the emotions. That's two different things. It's two different things. So that's why it is separated here in saying with all thine heart. And then he goes and puts a comma and says, and with all thine soul. Then he goes and says, and with all thy might. What is thy might? Thy, thy capability. So I'm going to say something. Don't get offended with what I'm about to say, because if you are in your feelings, you're going to get offended with what I'm about to say. So just put your big girl drawers on and be prepared for what I'm about to say. When it talks about with all thy might, what he's talking about is, is stop being a wimp, basically. With all thy might. So if you continuously keep losing in that area, it is because you carry the wimp syndrome instead of standing up to the thing you keep bowing to the thing instead of saying no to the thing you keep surrendering to the thing so he has to put it in there to say with all thy might with all your capability Take everything that you got and swing it. Don't get up to hit the ball and only want the ball to go to the pitcher's mound. No, knock it out the park. Knock it out the park. Keep going to practice and keep going until you are taught how to swing that bat and how to knock that ball, how to control where you want that ball to go. I used to play softball. You can control where you want that ball to go. If you hit that ball at a certain place, it will go down towards third base. If you hit it at another place, it'll go down towards first base. It's all about what you do and how you control that bat. That is with all your might. But what is happening is, is a lot of us are just wanting to tap it. Just And so, okay, you tap it now. When you tap it, the probability of you getting out is higher. 
I don't think you heard me. When you just tap it, the probability of you getting out is higher. You got a hind catcher. All he got to do is step across the plate and get it right there where you just hit it. Then you also have a pitcher that all they have to do is run up to get it. But if you notice your people that are positioned in the in in the pyramid, you will realize that the third baseman is right there by himself. The next person is way back off in the back. And then, you know, it's it's the proximity of uh, the proximity of a uh, uh, proximity of them getting you is very, very short. The chances of them getting you, it lessens the further out you send that ball. But if you only want, well, I'm just going, you know, I I ain't going to really try to do nothing. You know, I, 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 there's not many battles you're going to win. You're not going to win many battles. And you're going to definitely be aggravated with somebody like me. Because I'm coming up to the bat and knock this thing straight on out of here. I ain't got time to play. Knock it on out of here. So, you know, so you have to find your crowd. You know, your crowd is the ones that don't want to really do nothing for real. They just want to play mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. My crowd is, hey, look, cut that thing off at the head and let's get on up out of here. We ain't got time to play. No, we ain't got time because we realize it's not going to change, see. So go on and kill it because it's not going to change. Get rid of it. Knock it up, knock it on out the park. So that's what we do. So when there is a war that is going on within and the war has now become obvious that it is going on, it's become obvious because something needs to come to an end. Let me give you the definition of the word war again. A sustained effort to deal with or end a particular unpleasant or undesirable situation. So it has now, it's coming up because something needs to come to a close. Something needs to end. So they got into a fight and they stopped talking to each other. It was designed that way. It has to come to an end. It has to come to a close. Okay, so some examples of internal struggles that were going on with people. We see where Eve evidently had an internal struggle. They had been given an instruction of what not to do, but evidently she had a struggle with it. And so what Lucifer did was used the fact that she was struggling and caused her to not have a healthy fear of what God said. And you know she didn't have a healthy fear of what God said because she ate of the fruit and wasn't supposed to. So anywhere there is a unhealthy fear, when you know when when the fear when you don't have a healthy fear of God, it's unhealthy. You don't reverence and respect like you should. You gonna touch some forbidden fruit. It's inevitable. You gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You gonna do it. Point blank. Period. We gonna do it. Another person, Cain, had an internal struggle. He was looking at his brother and the things that his brother was dealing with. You know, his brother giving a sacrifice to the Lord and the Lord receiving his sacrifice. And he looks at it and he gets pissed. So he has an unhealthy or an internal war going on on the inside. He has this secret dark side. Another person, David had an internal struggle, which was a war within. You understand that he had a war within because he would murder a man to have his wife. He would, he would, and he would do things that were of disobedience to the Holy Spirit. So you see that there was an internal struggle or a war within. Jonah had an internal struggle. He was told to go and preach to these people. He just, outright, he wasn't going to do it. 
Why? Because he did not have a healthy fear of the Lord. He didn't have a healthy reverence or respect for the Lord. And in every one of these situations, something, it caused something to happen to them. It caused something. Uh, Adam and Eve, it caused death. Cain killing Abel, it caused a, a great depth of guilt upon him that would torment him. With uh, David, the Bible said that the sword would never leave his house, even right now. The lineage of David is still fighting their swords against his lineage. Jonah, his internal situation, caused him to have to go into the belly of a fish. It suspended him into a dark place. Peter had in war within. His war within was to not be honest. Have you been with Jesus? Uh uh. I ain't been with him. Little child comes up and says, That man was with that man Jesus. Peter cussed the child out. His war within was to be honest. Judas had a war within. He was obsessed with money. His obsession with money led him to betray the Savior of the world. The same man that he had been walking with. The same man that he saw wrought miracles, signs, and wonders. But yet he would betray him over some money because he had a war within. He had a problem going on within. So I pose to y'all tonight about this war within. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? The wages of it is death. Period. It's not just trying to mess with you. It's not just trying to, you know, uh, cause you just a little bit of trouble. It's trying to kill you. That's the ultimate goal of it. It's trying to kill you. If it can kill you, then your purpose cannot be fulfilled. If it can take you out, then your reason cannot be fulfilled if it can take you out so what do you plan to do with your war that's going on within your war that's happening within understanding it and what it means and what it's trying to do The greatest thing is decision. Making the decision to win. That's the greatest thing. Let me open up to see. Do I have any questions or any comments on this evening? Any questions? Any comments? Good evening, everybody. Um... Very interesting. War within. E-N-D and I-N. Both of them is in. That I just... Oof. Within. And need to come to an end. Them two. It's done something to me. But I thank God for this. Please understand this, y'all. Whenever it is brought to the attention, because, you know, 
it's a particular time when it's brought to the attention. You can be in something and have done, you know, done been in it and it ain't been no issue. But once it starts becoming a war, that's because God is saying you've been lukewarm long enough. I, I don't have enough of it. I don't have enough of it. I am no longer going to be a part of the lukewarmness. You're not going to have to make a decision. That's all that is. Because you can look back and say, man, I've been doing this 10 years, and now why all of a sudden it's an issue going on? Yeah. It's an issue because God done got tired and done gave 10 years for us to make a decision. He's gave 10 years for me to make a decision, you know, because that's what God does. God would give you time to make a decision. That man is not trying to make robots out of us. And I love that. God will let you make a decision. But then he see like you ain't making no decision. Then he says, I had to step up to the plate to say, hey, look, listen. You're not taking the effort in this. I need to know what's going on. Is it going to be me or is it going to be the world? You know, is it going to be up or is it going to be down? You know, which one is it going to be? The same thing that we do is the same thing that God does. We are in his image. God wants to know what's up too. God has to ask us what's up because he gives us freedom of choice. If he didn't give us freedom of choice, he would just make the decision for us. And he would run off everything and say, you know, that can't be here because you mine and I don't want that here. But see, he don't do that because he gives us freedom of choice. He wants us to make the decision. He wants us to become consciously aware and to care enough about us that we would do what's best for us. A lot of times we won't. So when there is a war within, that's exactly what's going on. Any other questions? Any comments? Did y'all understand what was said? All miles on mute tonight, I see. Did y'all understand what was said? Yes, ma'am, and out. Somebody be bold enough to be honest enough to give a takeaway. What did you get out of out of the message tonight? What did you get? For me, it was a lot of confirmation about the place that I've been regarding a couple of uh, regarding a lot of areas in my life, and um, it was just like you know, solidifying. Uh, well, just putting just it was confirmation to making a decision about where I'm going with, with some things. And I know my decision regarding those things and to keep pushing through. Um, and there's some areas where there is a coward and you need to get up and give it all you got. So go ahead. So this won't continue to be an issue for you and your shrinking. Okay. Anybody else got a takeaway? What did you identify? What did you hear? You know, I mean. Um, mine says um, you have to press on and don't war against yourself because you can be your own enemy sometime. Show you right. All right. Anybody else? What did you get? What did you hear? All right, I'm going to do the closing prayer, and we're going to slide out of here. Thank y'all for tuning in to what the Holy Spirit, I mean, that joker. I'm telling y'all, I had already wrote it down on the paper. I was going to talk about 
It's us, not me. Got the title wrote down. I was going to talk about that. It's us, not me, and God changed it. I'm <laughs> sitting in the living room. God said, no. No, I want you to talk about the war within, and I want you to do a series on it. Okay. Okay. All right. So I want y'all to remember, whenever you're dealing with commandments, statutes, and judgments, that God is wanting to teach you something. So when God affords you to get connected to a teacher, which I am, I'm, I am, you know, I'm not your hooper and holler. I am a teacher, a prolific teacher in the word of God. It is because God is wanting to teach you certain things. You're breaking some commandments. You more than likely got some stuff going on inside your character that ain't right. And then the judgments, you know, there are some judgments that's been spoke against you that God's judgment needs to t turn he needs to stop. Maybe somebody done said, you know, uh, such and such going to happen to you and you're going to pay for this and you're going to pay for that. See, that's a judgment that's been spoke against you. And so God wants to turn those things, but he has to teach you the right way that he wants to do stuff so that you can get in the right way because you haven't been in the right way. You're in the wrong way. You're walking in the wrong path. So that is what God, you know, that is what God is doing. So you have to sit, you know, and I, I will tell you all this, you know, you have to let allow yourself to be a student. You have to become a student. You have to be willing to sit your butt down and be connected. And you have to know how to take a correction. And you have to be okay with taking the correction. And you have to be okay with seeing yourself in a light that you probably don't want to see yourself in. You know, some because you don't think that you're that person or you don't want to be that person. But then you're called that person and you don't like it. You have to be okay with be, with that's, that that's what it is. Because a lot of times you're being called out of something that you've gotten common with. You've gotten used to it. You've been doing that for so long that you didn't even realize that you was doing some old jacked up stuff. Because that's just the way that you've been doing it. And so now it's having to be called out of you. And you, you know, and so now you, 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 you know, you don't watch it. You can find yourself easily offended by it. And then when you become easily offended, it causes you to disconnect from something that is pouring into you to help to make you better. So you have to watch all these things when there is a war that's going on within. You have to watch when you are a passive person that just lets things happen. When you just only want to hit the ball, just you'll show up at the game now. You, you, I mean, you'll show up and people will think that because you showed up at the game that you're really trying to play, but you really ain't trying to play. You're just trying to hit the ball just a little bit. And because you're just a person that hit it just a little bit and don't want to make nobody mad, don't want to offend nobody, and, and you want all your friends to like you and you don't want nobody to be upset with you. So you just going to hit it a little bit because if I hit it a lot and then my girlfriend can't, you know, and, and she can't come, you know, come... And and, and I make a home run, and then we win the game, and she going to be mad at me, you're going to have some problems. you just going to have to be willing to take the chance of her being mad at you. She should understand it's a game anyway, and you came to win. So she should understand that she needs to play her best and on her side, and you play your best on your side because you came to win, point blank, period. But if you are afraid of that, then you're going to be cowering down all the time. And when you run across somebody like myself, you're going to have a hard time dealing with me because I am not going to play no games. I'm, I don't, I, I ain't going to chop it up. I am not going to play no games. I'm like, Hey, look, man, knock that mess out of here and let's go. We got another game next week, a whole nother team that we got to play next week. We ain't got time to be dealing with this. Let's go. Let's go. So it's going to be that way. So you have to allow yourself to know where you have been connected, where God has stationed you, who God has connected you to, and appreciate that and just deal with it. You'll smile after a while when you get that trophy because you don't want that game. And you know you gave it your all as a team effort to win the game. You will smile. So, Father, I thank you. <laughs> For allowing us to come together on this evening. I thank you for your word tonight, Father. I thank you for illuminating your Bible, your word, man. It is the infallible word of the Lord. It is the word of truth. It is the principles to which we 
live by. It is the governing authority of our lives. And I thank you for your word, Father. And I pray tonight, God, that your word has fallen upon good soil, that it may bring forth an abundance of harvest of fruit, that none of it has fallen to the ground, that it does not take root, but that it shall bring forth a great harvest and we shall see a great return upon these things, Father. God, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I thank you that they are part of a team, Father. They are part of the team that you are establishing and that you are building. And I pray, God, that they will play their best position. They will play at their best in their position. They won't have half haphazardly get in and do things, but they will play at their best that they will have the mentality to win the game and to knock this thing out the park and to even bring in their fellow co-laborers because one can hit a ball to bring in those that are on the other bases. So I thank you, Father, for a spirit of unity that is among us. And I thank you that the wars that are within, Lord, will come to a place of decision. They will come to a place of decisiveness and that we will be anchored in the decisions, whichever way that it may be. I pray that it is the decision of light and not darkness is what I pray. I have no authority over any decision anybody makes. I can only pray and intercede that we make the right decisions. And I thank you, Father, that even if there be a wrong decision that be made because there is a such thing of a wrong turn, I pray, God, that you would extend mercy. And I pray that you would extend your hand of forgiveness, Father, that you would stand as the prodigal son, Father, stood by and waited for him to come home and that he found himself home before death. And I thank you, Father, that there will be a returning of home before death if there are any decisions made to go in a, another direction. God, I bless you, Lord, and I love you and I praise you tonight. And I ask that you restore the virtue unto me that has been given out on this evening. I pray that you come Cover me in your blood and shield me from the, the attacks of the enemy, from the, the wars of the enemy, from the assaults of the enemy, from even the desire, the malicious desire of the enemy, the contracts that he have placed against my life, that you protect me from those things, God, that you will keep me from the witches and from the warlocks, Father, from those with the chanting, God, in the name of Jesus, but that the blood of Jesus would cover my life and I stay within the confines and the confounds of what you have purpose for me in the name of Jesus. Anywhere I step out, I pray your forgiveness and that you would alert me immediately to get back in place and in alignment. And I thank you for that now. And I ask this to be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, you good people. I love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night.